Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're going to talk and maybe rant a little bit about some of the new Etsy policy changes and what they mean for the seller community as a whole. If you don't know who I am, hi, nice to meet you. I run the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel where I dye a lot of yarn. The yarn that I dye mostly ends up in my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, which I opened in April 2018. Since then, I have made over 600 sales and using Etsy's own words, I guess my shop is a success story, which means that I am automatically opted in to some of the new policy changes. This week, Etsy introduced a brand new risk-free advertising service, which on the surface isn't so bad, except for a few things that make me and a lot of other sellers really, really angry. Previously, sellers who wanted to advertise on and off Etsy would set a budget and pay Etsy. Etsy would put up the ads whether or not you get any sales. Under the new risk-free policy, when Etsy runs ads off-site of Etsy, say on Google, Instagram, or Facebook, if they're running the ad of your listing, someone clicks on the ad and then makes a purchase in your shop within 30 days, then you pay an advertising fee of 12 to 15% of the total sale, including shipping. Now, on the surface, there's some good things about this policy. I'll get into what makes me really angry in a moment. Uh, previously, you could set an advertising budget. I don't know if you could dictate how much was used off-site versus on Etsy because I've never run ads, which is a very important thing to my whole point here today. Uh, but now, if Etsy runs an ad of your popular listing um, and runs it on Google or Facebook or Instagram, someone sees it, clicks on the listing, and then makes a purchase in your shop within 30 days, then you pay the ad commission. You don't pay any ad fees if they run your ad and no one makes any purchases. So in theory, you're making a sale that you wouldn't have made otherwise, and you're only paying for the ad if you make a sale. That's a good thing. The problem is that sellers can't all opt out of this policy. If you're a small seller, then you can opt out. But if you are a Etsy success story and have sold over $10,000 in a one year period, then you are automatically opted into this new ad policy. Um, and the benefit of being automatically opted in is that they will only take a 12% commission versus a 15% commission. As a larger shop, you are locked in to this ad policy for the rest of the time, whether or not your sales drop. This is where I have the issue. Shop owners should have the choice on whether or not they spend money on advertising. I don't spend money on advertising. I advertise my shop here on YouTube. I should make it clear that I consider YouTube to be my main business Etsy supports the content that I do here. So as someone who has an advertising budget of zero, my pricing structure in my shop does not account for any advertising dollars. What Etsy is really doing is they are putting us in an affiliate marketer relationship where they're saying, hey, if we promote your shop, then you need to pay us a commission, which on one hand, okay, but sellers should get to opt in and still maybe set a budget and set a cap on that budget. But that isn't an option and we aren't given that option. Honestly, it's like Etsy wants larger sellers to leave the platform, which I know isn't what they're going for. But here's another problem that I have. This ad fee is only taken into account when Etsy runs an ad for your listing of your shop. Great. The problem is what counts as an offsite ad? If I Google my shop, if I just Google Kenneth's creations, the first thing that pops up is an ad. There is an Etsy sponsored post that's featuring one of my items. And so that means that if people are searching for me, um, this isn't someone scrolling through Instagram who happens to see an ad and then click on it. This is someone searching for my shop name 
could click on an Etsy ad and therefore Etsy gets more money from me than they would have otherwise. And so that is a concern for me, a big, big, big concern. <laughs> Suddenly, this isn't risk free for me anymore. I should add that in a lot of my affiliate relationships that I have, there are terms that say that the affiliate cannot outcompete you on ads. So for example, if I wanted to advertise a post about Knit Picks yarn, I could not pay Google an ad to get my, I could not use any terms related to Knit Picks for my ad to convince people to come to my site, to click through my link versus going to Knit Picks. And if you think about it, that makes sense. So I feel like the same kind of thing should be clear and without transparency on the types of ads that Etsy is running, it's a problem. It's also a problem if this only counts in ads on Google Shopping because again, if someone is searching for yarn and they pull it up, then fine. But if someone is searching for the brand name of the shop itself, why should Etsy get credit for that if you're already ranked number one in the search results for your shop name? Um, so that is a huge concern that honestly just came to me as I was researching for this video. Uh, I decided I was just, <laughs> sometimes I'm lazy and on my phone I'll just Google my name rather than typing in the URL and this popped up and it's a concern. Honestly, this whole thing really surprised me. Um, I have been holding my breath, expecting Etsy to force free shipping on all sellers. I'll talk about that in a moment. But this really took me aback. Etsy personalized the messages that they sent to sellers. For example, mine said that since I'm a success story, I'm opted into the policy, but it also said that uh, this probably will affect fewer than 5% of my total sales. And I kind of believe them on this because they have the data, they know what ads they've run, and if any of it has accounted for any of my sales and things like that. And I have seen some other people share the emails where Etsy has said that it'll probably account for less than 10% of their sales. So those numbers are out there and exist. It still remains that shop owners don't have control over our advertising budgets anymore. So if we break down all of the Etsy fees, Etsy takes a 5% fee, um, transaction fee on every uh, purchase that people make, um, which is fair. They're hosting, they're doing a lot for the platform. And, and honestly, this 5% is on par with many, many other platforms. Uh, they, Sellers pay 20 cents for each listing we put up, and then once the purchase is made, we pay a three to 5% approximately payment processing fee, which is the fee that goes to credit card companies, PayPal, things like that. All told, the fees that most sellers pay on every single listing that they offer is about 10%. There was a bit of an uproar when Goodness, this must have been shortly after I joined Etsy. Etsy started charging their transaction fee, that 5%, on the total cost of the order, including the cost of shipping. And so why should Etsy be making money on shipping when shopkeepers aren't making any money on shipping? And this was to do two things. One, I think it was sort of a step to drive people to the free shipping model. But also there were some sellers who might list an item for really cheaply and then charge a lot of money for shipping to sort of avoid paying that transaction fee. That's fine. I wish that they would waive that fee if we bought shipping labels through Etsy. What it did was that we all had to raise prices on shipping to accommodate this fee, thereby passing it on to our customers, which is unfortunate. But if we're having to pay a transaction fee on shipping anyway, well, maybe you should wrap the cost of shipping into the cost of your item. But free shipping isn't free. I don't know when, but I'm expecting that someday Etsy is going to require shops to offer free shipping. I really wish they picked $50 or $65, maybe then I could get on board, but 
$35 is really, really low. But with Etsy's push to offer free shipping, why should a shop do it or not do it? Well, placement in Etsy search. Shops that offer free shipping over $35 for their entire shop get priority in some search results. So for some shops, you really need to do it to be seen. But again, since I am driving most of the traffic to my own shop, uh, this isn't something that really mattered to me. So it all comes down to advertising and the choices that we make. Etsy is a private company and they can make these choices. And honestly, they could make more choices. They can't require us to stay, but you know, it is their prerogative to make these choices. But as sellers, we have choices too, and we can choose to take our shop and our listings off of Etsy. Which brings me to why am I still on Etsy? At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that my business is filming videos for YouTube. Etsy is one of the biggest ways that I finance this, both in terms of making space so I can buy more bear yarn, but yeah, to just fund the videos themselves. At this point, I think that I'm selling enough on Etsy that cost-wise, it would make sense for me to create my own shop on Shopify. Since I'm not getting a lot of benefit from Etsy search results, uh, the top four things that people search for on Etsy that leads them to my listings are a variation of chemnets. So those are people looking for me specifically. Um, Etsy, you can't really take credit for those. Uh, not that under the new risk-free ad policy they are, but they claim credit in my metrics, which, you know, they're searching for me, so they're looking for me. <laughs> uh, it, it probably would make financial sense for me to go to Shopify or something like that. But Etsy still serves a perk. They have a platform and I don't have to design my own website. I don't have to troubleshoot the way listings are showing up. And that really does have value to me. And so at some point, yeah, I'll probably go to my own website. Uh, I mean, I think it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but I've been wanting to create sort of a central hub for all of the things that I do, not just a shop. And so that's another question for another day. And I'm happy to make another video at some point talking about my business model and how I function and operate <laughs> things over here, but today I'm really focusing on Etsy. The risk-free ad policy could be good for you. If you're a really big shop, it could give you another little boost. If you're a small shop, maybe it could help you make sales. But honestly, it feels like Etsy is responding to people complaining that it's worthless to invest in Etsy ads because people aren't seeing a big benefit from it, or Etsy wanting to advertise Etsy and bring more people to the platform to make more sales so they make money, but they don't want to pay for the ads, they want us to pay for the ads. <laughs> and yeah, that's just, it's grimy. Like I, when I saw this email, I saw red. I am a pretty upbeat person, but I was angry. You'll be able to see exactly how many sales you're getting from offsite ads on your new dashboard, which will be available in a few weeks, and you'll start being charged later in April. I'm glad we'll see information on the traffic that we're getting from offsite ads, but I'm mad that I am required to participate in this program. Not to mention, so most of my listings are one of a kind skeins. Occasionally I'll have three in one colorway, but I have very few listings where there are multiple things available and I make multiple purchases from that. I don't necessarily benefit from an ad that Etsy runs because by the time they run an ad for a skein of yarn, that item could be gone. And in fact, the ad I see them run most frequently is for my tote bags, <laughs> for my merch, which, I mean, maybe I should take it down. Like, it's just wild to me. <laughs> Etsy wants to make money, and I don't think that they care a lot about the individual shopkeepers. And 
<sighs> are they taking advantage? I don't know. I think that if you were to opt in and try it out, I think that there are perks to this. And I think that if this was something they were offering, maybe I would test it out and try it out and see what happened. But I would like transparency from Etsy and to know if off-site ads like the ones that show up when I Google my shop name that replace the first like listing, the first search result. Uh, my phone won't let me take a screenshot of me being incognito, but this first result when I Google uh, my shop is an ad. It is a sponsored listing from Etsy. And then if I scroll down, I see my shop. I don't have a screenshot of this, but the first time I searched for Chemnitz Creations today, just so that way I could get a screen grab of what my shop looks like, um, I did see a just a sponsored text result for my shop name on there. And so, huh, Etsy, like, I don't know. I, I, I think that maybe like Google search should be excluded. I don't know. Um, I've seen some posts going around telling sellers, do not click on any Etsy ads. And honestly, I'm not saying that. As shoppers, I think that you should proceed as you do. Don't worry if when you're searching, if what you clicked on was an ad or not. Honestly, no hard feelings. Um, I'm very, very thankful to have a wonderful community of people who support not only the content that I produce here on YouTube, but also my shop, which allows me to work full time from home um, at a job that gives me flexibility and as a parent allows me that time to be flexible when parenthood of young children requires it. So overall, I really am thankful for all of you and all of your support. I really just wanted to sit down and give my thoughts on this whole situation. And this is going to be crudely edited together. I'm not planning to go back and reshoot anything. So it's a bit of a stream of consciousness. There's probably things I forgot to say, but thank you so much for tuning in and hearing me out. Again, I want to clarify that this new policy, this 12% ad fee that Etsy is adding on is only in effect when Etsy is running an ad of one of your listings. That Google search I showed, that might count as an ad of a listing, it probably does, but you won't be paying that fee if someone clicks on any ad for Etsy at all. It's only when they're targeting your shop to viewers. So. At the very least, if you're having to pay that fee, you did get benefit in advertising and Etsy did spend money advertising you. So there is some benefit to you there. I, I just believe that shop owners should get to set a budget or opt in or do a trial and decide not to do it. But we have a choice. We can choose to stay and keep our listings on Etsy, thereby uh, indirectly agreeing and accepting these new terms, or we have the choice to set up an independent shop or move to another platform entirely. And that choice is yours, it's mine, and I think everybody should make the choice that is best for themselves. But man, I would really, really, really like to see an Etsy policy or a new Etsy change that shop owners are like, yeah, that's awesome. I think sometimes they forget that as shop owners, we are their customers too. And the only customers are not the ones that are making the purchases. So I think Etsy forgets that sometimes when they're creating these policies that alienate the people who make it possible for them to make money. But yeah, with this policy, given the 10% total fees we're approximately paying already, if we have to pay, if someone has to pay another 15% fee, that's about 25%. Take a look at your profit margins. Can you accommodate a 25% fee? That includes shipping. Oh, right. This 12 to 15% advertising fee includes the cost of shipping, 
which is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous that they should be making this commission on shipping charges. And I understand why they're doing it. They don't want people to put more money, charge more money for shipping. They want us to wrap it all into the cost. But come on Etsy. Maybe you guys can give some kind of shipping credit based on sale volumes or something. Or somehow subsidize labels bought within Etsy even more. Something to make up for it. But gosh, if they if they make the free shipping permanent, if I make a sale of $35, I have a 15% cost that is the shipping. I have a 10% total cost that is the total, just the standard fees that Etsy has, which again are on par with other companies. But then if I were to have a 15% fee because they put an ad to the listing, all of a sudden told, it adds up. And I think that a lot of people when they're setting up a shop don't necessarily take all of these fees into consideration when they're setting their prices. And therefore it can be hard for people to turn a profit that they can reinvest in their business into materials and supplies that they need to grow. So I just, I, I'm disappointed Etsy, do better. Do better for those of us that are using your platform. Do things to help us stay loyal to your platform. I have only been on Etsy for two years, so I can't really wax on about all of the changes that have come to Etsy. I really can just look at these policy differences that have come up since I joined the platform not quite two years ago. They raised transaction fees and applied those to shipping costs. They uh, started heavily pushing free shipping and then said that we won't prioritize you in search results unless you offer free shipping. And now this risk-free ad credit, which if you're someone that has an advertising budget of zero, it sounds like it's a huge risk and liability. Anyway, I am sure that I've repeated myself a lot in this video. Uh, if you've watched the whole thing, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. I hope that this shed some light on the new policy. I hope that it gave some information that is helpful. And yeah, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on and all that jazz. And after all of this, if you would like to check out my shop, you can find a link to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop in the video description and in the top corner of this video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to hearing what you think about all of these changes, both as sellers and consumers. Thank you so much for watching.